All right, so our first speaker today is uh, Anil Yildirim. He's a PhD candidate in the MDO lab at University of Michigan, so another one of Professor Martin's students. He's been working on design optimization for boundary layer ingestion, and I've been collaborating quite closely on him, well, uh, with him on this. Uh, it's uh, follow on some, from some of the research I did for my own PhD. He's one of the folks who's really pushing the boundaries of what OpenMDO open can do at scale, so working with CFD. Uh, there's only a few folks who are really trying to tightly integrate high fidelity stuff. Obviously, <laughs> Professor Kennedy talked about some of that earlier. Um, and so a lot of times he's breaking things or, or, or stretching the efficiency of the framework just by the very nature of running CFD in there. I think uh, not only is the technical work very interesting to me, but from a practical standpoint, some of what he's doing, combining CFD along with uh, a thermodynamic low order solver is probably pretty relevant to a lot of you. Uh, and so I think his perspective should be pretty interesting. Right. So like Justin said, go-karting was a lot of fun, but it was very challenging to find the optimal path through the track. <laughs> and something else that's very challenging is aircraft design. And that's partially because there are a lot of disciplines we need to worry about, and the trades between those disciplines are not straightforward. So that's why we're studying multidisciplinary design optimization at the MDO lab. And research in the MDO lab is divided into two main thrusts. We're working on developing fundamental MDO algorithms, and we're working on applications of MDO. And to give you a scale on the um, size of the problems we're working on, we optimize about a thousand aerodynamic shape and structural sizing design variables of the common research model using a RAND CFD coupled to a finite element model. <coughs> And we've developed an uh, undeflected common research model 13.5, which is a high aspect ratio version of the CRM that was uh, developed by Tim here. And both of these models are open source. And we've also open sourced our aerodynamic shape optimization framework called Mach Arrow. And you can find all the repositories on our GitHub page. But mock error consists of our geometry parameterization framework, volume mesh deformation, the flow solver, and the adjoint solver. And in today's talk, I'm going to talk, be talking about what we call OM AD flow, which is how we use AD flow with OpenMDAO. And I'll briefly talk about OMFSI, which is the ongoing work on developing fluid structure, interfa fluid structure interaction interface in OpenMDAO and talk about my experience with using OpenMDAO. And to begin with, we're using AD flow, that's our CFD solver, and we've developed AD flow for high fidelity MDO. It's a multi-block RANS overset solver, and it's efficient adjoint solver provides accurate gradients. And here you're seeing an optimization that starts from a circle and then converges to a supercritical airfoil. And what most people expect to happen is that the optimizer will start with a circle and gradually shrink the design until you get the supercritical airflow. But what really happens is that you have to go through these intermediate infeasible designs and your CFD needs to be able to converge that if you really want to push button solution in MDO. So that's why we tuned our solver to be extremely robust. And you can find the two publications related to that at these references. Um, and the Py with all this, all this work was done with the Python interface to AD flow. And it's a general interface that can be applied to other aerodynamic solvers too. So on the center of it all, we have the aerodynamic solver object we create in Python. And the inputs with dark colored arrows are the uh, mandatory inputs. So you need to have an aerodynamic problem and the aerodynamic solver always outputs integrated quantities. Now, in an MDO framework, you can also plug in a geometry object for geometry manipulation and a mesh object to warp the volume mesh given your new geometry. And again, you can couple this aerodynamic solver to other, sol other solvers by taking in surface displacements and boundary condition values and then outputting in surface quantities like forces and heat fluxes. And it's not just the Python interface to AD flow, it's the whole mock framework that was the main enabler in this aerodynamic and aerostructural optimization with high fidelity. We use Python to couple compiled analysis codes. 
And the framework is relatively flexible. We can swap solvers, either aerodynamic or structural, but it is difficult to extend this approach to additional disciplines. The implementations become ad hoc pretty quickly. And that is why we start working on what's called an o, what's what we call OM AD flow, stands for OpenMDAO AD flow, that integrates mock arrow framework with OpenMDAO. And the implementation in OpenMDAO is pretty straightforward. We use a distributed component for the CFD states and a serial component for the functionals. But in reality, both of these components call the CFD solver object we have in Python level. And the component for the states called the nonlinear solvers in AD flow, and the serial component for functionals call the function evaluation routines in AD flow. And again, this wrapper is pretty lightweight and it's included in AD flow, which is open source. You can find it on our GitHub page. And with this approach, we integrated the geometry and the mesh warping components within OMAD flow. So on the top level, what OpenMDAO sees is that it passes us design variables. In the OMAD flow group, we take those design variables, update our geometry and the mesh, get volume mesh coordinates, solve for the CFD, and integrate the forces, and then pass back integrated quantities. So it becomes very easy to couple other codes in OpenMDAO using this approach. And with this approach, we performed air propulsor design optimizations of the Stark ABL configuration. So this configuration uses an electric fan on the aft fuselage to ingest the fuselage boundary layer for improved air propulsive efficiency. And this work was funded by the NASA Transformational Tools and Technologies and Advanced Air Transport Technology Projects. Um, the framework we use, the tool chain we used for this work has multiple components. And here you can see what OM80 flow is responsible from. We have the geometry, mesh warping, and the CFD solver, like I said. And on top of this, we added a propulsion model, a lowered propulsion model, to get to compute the shaft power required to operate the fan. And as I stated, we use OpenMDAO in this work as the MDO framework and it handles all the data transfer between the components and it efficiently solves the coupled derivative problem. And if you want to learn more about the details of, of this work, you can check out the two journals we have there. And at one point, Justin told me to stop doing any research and get him a movie. So I got him a movie. <laughs> and that's why we have to see it at every presentation I'm giving. Um, and this movie briefly talks, like summarizes the, the work we did with the Stark ABL. We want to study the design at a range of different operating points. And the, I'm, I'm trying to visualize that here. We studied a range of thrust and fan pressure ratio values for the DLI fan and studied how much shaft power we would need to operate the BLI fan. And that, that's our experience with using CFD with OpenMDAO. And we saw that it can work with our efforts on Open OM80 flow. So now I'm going to talk about the current efforts on the tool called OMFSI, or OpenMDAO Fluid Structure Interaction. So it's an ongoing effort to streamline FSI integration within OpenMDAO. And the main work up to now, now was done by Kevin Jacobson, who's at Langley. And he sent me some materials so I could present them today. He couldn't join to the workshop. Um, the tool provides useful methods to build an FSI framework with OpenMDAO. And the goal is to create a plug and play <laughs> approach to FSI. So what do I mean by it? Here's an example. We say a generic aerodynamic problem can be defined by the surface definition. So on the OpenMDO level, what OpenMDO sees is that it passes surface coordinates to our aerodynamic group. And we can have two different solvers that use the same interface. On the left, we can have a RANS or an Euler code that uses a volume mesh. And then we can include these components in our group. Or on the right, we can use a VLM solver and still use the same interface. 
So this is what we're going for with the plug and play approach. And this will also enable um, multi-fidelity optimization in the future. Um, currently, OMFSI uses ADFlow for air dynamics and tax for structures. It uses fun to fem transfer scheme. And we're working on implementing additional air dynamic and structural solvers within OMFSI. Current work is on verifying error structural gradients. And the implementation right now has three basic levels. On the top, you have a mod model that's your OpenMDAO model that can contain multiple scenarios. Each scenario represents an analysis point in a multi-point optimization. And these scenarios contain the FSI groups which perform the actual computations. So how this looks on an N2 diagram is as follows. So on top, you have the fun to fem transfer scheme that transfers the displacements to the aerodynamic group. Here, you have the components responsible from AD flow. And then you have force transfer, again, fun to fem. And then you have tax for the structural solver. And our vision for OMFSI is to provide a standard FSI interface in OpenMDAO. We're trying to define a common interface to analysis codes so that people can bring their analysis codes into this framework and then hopefully, hopefully with lower implementation efforts. It's ongoing work with NASA, University of Michigan, Georgia Tech, and others. And again, OpenMDAO handles all the couple sensitivity computation in this framework. Um, and again, our vision is so that OMFSI will enable design optimizations with aerodynamics, structures, and other disciplines. That's the main goal here. And as stated in the Safety 2030 report, MDAO limited by one-off laborious non-standard interfaces, and that is the problem we want to solve here. And just to give you a quick feedback on my experiences with OpenMDAO, so what works? Documentation. I almost always find what I'm looking for. I don't know. It seems like people's um, people's minds are not like set. Is it good? Is it bad? For me, I find it very useful. Um, computing gradients. It might sound obvious, but I'm just amazed how well it works. You can just plug one. You can change your connections, but you still have a working Newton solver with very minimal effort. That's you wouldn't really have that with many other like frameworks. And the models are very easy to set up. And because of that, it's also very easy to make mistakes with your models. Now, the users don't go through the pain of implementing stuff themselves. They don't know how the coupling works. So it becomes a lot easier to make mistakes. And it becomes a lot more difficult when something goes wrong to understand what's going wrong. And this is an item we discussed yesterday. We can have a conversation on that later on, too. Um, our mock error approach had a different approach to computations than OpenMDAO. With OpenMDAO, you do one big setup and then start computing things. With mock error, we tend to do computations at the last possible moment. So this kind of creates this ideological difference where we need the state size from a component downstream when we're setting up components. And Tim ran into these problems with his codes, too. And something, like Justin said, that I ran, ran into pretty frequently is running into bugs when updating to new versions. And these usually are parallel bugs you cannot replicate locally. So it becomes even more pay, painful to debug these on clusters. But we, I don't think we can ever avoid this. I mean, I can confidently say my codes never have bugs. But <laughs> so yeah, I'm a firm believer that every and any code will have bugs. But it's, it becomes extremely more difficult. Like I said, you don't know the details of the implementation. And when you run into a bug, it's not clear what's causing that issue. And it usually represents itself somewhere downstream of the component that actually has the bug. So it's very difficult to do. And to wrap up, if there's one main message from this talk, is that you can use high fidelity CFD with OpenMDAO. OM80 flow integrates our aerodynamic shape optimization framework with a, within OpenMDAO. And we performed air propulsive design optimizations of the Stark ABL configuration using this approach. And now we're working on OMFSI 
to enable plug and play FSI framework in OpenMDL. And hopefully with these efforts, we can get configurations like Stark ABL closer to reality. Thank you. Yeah, so OM AD flow is under the Python directory in AD flow repository. It's just a few Py, um, Python files that couple like what's what we call like Py AD flow in the code to OpenMDAO. OMFSI right now, I don't think it's public, but the plans are. Yeah, to make the it open intention source, is to right? make OMFSI public, but it's just so not. PyGeo, ID Warp, they're integrated in OMAD flow. So it, it, yeah, the, the main repo for PyGeo and ID Warp is open source. The mesh warping is open source. And all you really need is the extra few Python files in the AD flow um, repo to integrate them in OpenMDAO. So are you thinking uh, V8 with the bundle Very nice. <laughs> Can you talk about the, the vision for the common surface geometry format? So, um, let me find that, hold on. Are you talking about yeah. this point? Yeah. So the idea is that you can define an aerodynamic problem with the outer mold line definition and some like boundary conditions, let's say flight conditions. But the, for the geometry, what you really ne only need is surface coordinates. And our approach, so we, we've been developing like a few tools in that tool chain. So we can get surface coordinates, update our like surface mesh. And, and like, you know, we're developing component based, we're working on component based tools while doing the geometry updating too. And then once you have updated surface coordinates, you can either deform your volume mesh if you want to do RANs, or you can get a VLM mesh just by the surface definition, or you can use a panel code. So the idea is to keep the interface as similar as possible between, between analysis codes. The surface definition is the only thing you really need. Um, yeah, so you can do the surface meshing in the blue box, but that will either become, become expensive or not robust enough to do in optimizations. So right now, the current, like, current best practice that we do, I guess, is like you said, a RANS definition. But there are tools out there so you can pass like a definition using, let's say, OpenVSP, for example. Just components and their sizes, and then um, once you provide an initial RANS mesh, we can track them throughout the optimization and don't need to remesh stuff. 